Welcome back. It's David Wiss, registered dietitian with the Los Angeles District California Dietetic Association. We've been discussing research over several modules in order to get more dietitians interested and curious about the process of collecting data. In the last segment, we talked about internal and external validity. Today, we're going to talk about survey studies in some more detail and the process of tool validation. Now, a survey study is used to capture thoughts, opinions, feelings, attitudes, beliefs, behaviors. It can be qualitative, such as an informal interview, but more likely it's quantitative. This is done using a validated questionnaire, which we're going to discuss today. Oftentimes, a quantitative survey is used with self-report and it's used with scales. This is very common in psychology. An example of a scale is a one to five measurement that describes a level of agreement. Perfect example is a Likert type scale, very common. One represents strongly disagree, two represents disagree, three is neither agree nor disagree, four is agree, and five is strongly agree. In other words, this is numerical data that describes one's attitudes and behaviors that range from one extreme to another. Another example is the nutrition self-efficacy scale. I use this in my practice and it's very useful. It asks this question, how certain are you that you could overcome the following barriers? And there are several nutrition related barriers that are listed and one is very uncertain, two is uncertain, three is certain, and four is very certain. Now these type of self-report scales can then be used to examine differences between groups on the scale items. For example, looking at differences between men and women, looking at differences of people of different ethnic backgrounds, different ages. In order to use this type of quantitative data, a tool has to be validated. And the process of tool validation is related to both reliability and validity. This is done using previously validated tools and measuring the current questions against the previous measures. Example coming very soon. Reliability is the degree to which an assessment tool will produce stable and consistent results. Oftentimes in the literature you'll see this referred to as internal reliability, whereas validity refers to how well the test measures what it's actually supposed to measure. It poses this question, does this theoretical concept match the measuring device, or in other words, the questionnaire? This is often referred to as construct validity, and this may use a panel of experts in the field to determine that the concept does in fact match the measuring device. Our example today is the Yale Food Addiction Scale. This was preliminary validated in 2008. Um, originally, the uh, questionnaire had 25 questions, which was based upon substance dependence criteria in the DSM-4. It was adapted with other questions to address the full range of criteria for addiction. It was then reviewed by experts and patients for both relevance and clarity. Of all of the randomly selected undergraduate students, 233 completed the survey, along with six other previously validated surveys, which was then used to determine internal reliability. This was done using statistical analysis after factor analysis to determine a Cronvax alpha. I know it sounds complicated and there's software programs for this. You also will need a statistician. Once the Yale Food Addiction Scale was deemed to be internally valid, it has then since shown external validity by testing on other populations. It's shown test retest validity and it's been correlated to both BMI and binge eating disorder. Since it was validated, it has been used in nearly 100 different studies, and the evidence about food addiction has become very robust, thanks to the rigorous process of validating the tool back in 2008. In the next segment, we're going to discuss survey studies in some more detail by looking at both inclusion and exclusion criteria, and we're going to examine differences between prospective, retrospective, and intervention studies. Stay tuned. We've got so much more information coming your way from LAD. My name is David Wiss, and I'm signing out.